In today's rather informal video, I'm gonna show you how to get your Focusrite audio interface set up and ready to start recording with Pro Tools First, which is bundled free with your audio interface. So a couple of things first. In order to activate your copy of Pro Tools First, you're gonna need an iLock account. Now, if you don't have one of these, head on over to iLock.com to set up a free account right now before you do anything else. Next, you need to register your Focusrite audio interface, which you do by going to customer.focusrite.com. If you've already got an account, you can just add this by adding the serial number, but if not, you'll need to set up a new Focusrite account. So now you've got your iLock account and you've registered your product. You now need to download the necessary software to get you started. Now, from your Focusrite registered products page, you can access the bundled software and any driver or control software that you're going to need. So for Pro Tools, follow the link in the bundled software page, which will take you off to avid.com, where you're gonna set up an account and authorize your iLock account with the Pro Tools first software. Follow these steps and then you will receive an email giving you access to download the software. Once you've downloaded and installed the software, you're gonna connect your audio interface. To connect to your computer, you will need one of these USB cables, of which there are two. The first one, a USB-C to USB-C, which if you have a recent computer such as a MacBook Pro, this is the one you should use for best performance. Alternatively, you may need to use this cable, which has a USB-C on one end for the audio interface, and on the other end, a standard USB connector plug, which you'll connect directly into your computer. Next, we're gonna connect the microphone to the interface with an XLR cable. The female end, which looks like this, plugs into your microphone. And then the male end, which looks like this, plugs into an input on your audio interface. If you're using a condenser microphone, you will likely need to enable the 48 volt phantom power by pressing this button here. And then you can use the gain control to set the mic level. The LED ring light indicates the level of signal coming in which flashes green for a good signal and changes to orange and red when the signal is peaking and a little hot. So dial it up as far as you can without it peaking. Now, if you're monitoring with headphones, simply plug them in here and you can control the level with the knob directly above. If you're using studio monitors, you can connect them via the two jack outputs on the rear of the device and the level is controlled by the large knob on the front panel. Now you're ready to record. Open the software and in Pro Tools, give your project a name. In the setup menu, you'll need to make sure that you select your audio interface in the playback engine settings. Here, you can see the name of the audio interface. Next, create a track. Then make sure you have the right input and output settings. Enable the track for recording and you should now see the active levels as you talk into the mic. Once you've recorded and edited your track, you can bounce your mix ready to publish or share for further editing and mixing. At the time of this recording, Pro Tools First doesn't work with Mac OS Catalina. So alternatively, you could use GarageBand, which comes free with any Mac that you buy um, and is, should be, should be pre-installed on your machine. If not, you can go and download that from the App Store. Or you could use Studio One Prime, which is a free DAW for both Mac and PC. You'll find links to more information on these in the description below. I hope you found this information useful, and if there's anything else you would like to know, please share with us in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.